Hey everyone, Larry here. I want to do some fermented uh, peppers today. Again, I do this about once, well, only once a year when uh, all my garden peppers are ripened and ready to uh, harvest and ferment or freeze or dehydrate or eat fresh, whatever. I do a lot of things with different peppers because uh, it's a fun, you know, another hobby for me, right? So what I'm going to do today is that I have a whole mixture of Tabasco, Habanero, sweet Melrose peppers and uh, some Fresnos, right? So I'm gonna do a, a mixture of these. Um, I also also have some, some garden grown tomatoes here. I don't normally put tomatoes in my fermented sauce, but uh, if I need a, some filler material to fill up the jar, I might throw in some tomatoes in there. It'll also help with uh, some of the fermentation because the bacteria on the surfaces of the Tomatoes will be similar to the same as the ones on the peppers. So um, I'm using some frozen peppers today as well. And uh, those probably um, have all the bacteria that has been killed off because they've been frozen, waiting for some more to come out of the garden so I can do a bigger batch. So uh, that's all the backstory, but uh, stick around. I wanna see what I can do with my uh, cell phone camera here and my uh, arm holding this thing up and a little microphone and see if this turns out well for you guys. So stick around. So what you're looking at here is my setup for today. I, as you can see, I have a cutting board uh, to cut everything on. And what I'm gonna be cutting on this board are some fresh Tabascos I just picked now. Um, some frozen ones I've been kind of collecting over the period of weeks to, to uh, waiting for the rest of them to turn red. I got a, a variety of red ripened. Uh, these are Melrose peppers. I got some Fresno peppers. I got some Habanero peppers. And uh, I got some garden tomatoes if I need to top up the, the uh, jar at all. I'm going to add those in there too. And uh, I got some salt. So you would just want plain salt, kosher salt, table salt, whatever. Just nothing with iodine added. Uh, like it says there, this does not supply iodine. That's perfect. That's what I want. Iodine will kill the bacteria. Something to mash up the peppers in. A scale and a ball jar or more depending on how many peppers you're doing. So what I start off doing right away, as you can see already here, is that I have this empty jar on the scale, weighing the empty jar at about 15 and a half ounces. I gotta take a note of that, write that down, and I'm gonna, and I'm gonna subtract that number from the weight of the peppers in the jar so I can get the weight of the peppers used so I know how much salt to calculate to add to the mash when I go to ferment it. So uh, let's get to this. Okay, one thing I want to make sure that you are wearing uh some kind of protective gloves especially uh if well, only if really if you're using hot peppers the sweet peppers obviously don't matter but i have habaneros and tabascos two very hot peppers so i think habaneros are around 300,000 scoville units and the tabascos are somewhere between 50 and 100 depending on what your source is uh, for that information really hot uh you don't want to be using your bare hands touching your face or any parts of your body or anything after this for hours to come wear something uh protective these are nitrile gloves i can i got these on amazon or menards or some local place uh or online source i've kind of you know go around the horn on that one but uh all right so protection so here are the tabasco peppers destemmed. Uh, i took all the stems off there and i only used a handful of, of fresh um the fresh peppers along with about half that quart bag of of the frozen ones i kept the other half of bag of frozen ones for the next batch i'm doing after this one all right so i'm going to go ahead and get these mashed up i also don't want too many frozen peppers in here because uh, the larger the ratio of frozen peppers to fresh peppers means the uh, less bacteria there is available to start fermentation which means starting fermentation uh, could take a long time or it may never happen at all so uh, try to keep the ratio of frozen peppers down uh, how much exactly i'm still on the fence about but it's definitely uh probably about half or less than the batch that you're making all right first batch going in all right so that's about what you want there is actually literally mash them up into little bits and pieces like that it increases the surface area for the bacteria to act on and speeds up the process a little bit and here is the melrose peppers in the lower left and the habaneros in the upper right there uh, ready to go in i want the sweet peppers to help offset some uh, at least some of the heat from the hotter habaneros and tabascos i hope this goes well and there they are let's get them in there and blend them suckers
Yeah, there you go. That's pretty too. Oh, that's gorgeous. Now I'm going to add these peppers to the jar along with the Tabascos. So that's that. And then, uh, but that is, you can see that's still not enough to fill the whole jar. It's only, it's like actually less than half and I want more than half, probably upwards of three quarters full. All right, I got all the Fresnos destemmed and chopped up, ready to go. Yeah, there we go. That looks pretty good. So more than halfway, probably five eighths full. You want a little head space because you don't want um, too much head space or too little. Uh, too much head space, you start getting mold in there early on because uh, it doesn't have, it's just too much vol volume for the uh, fermentation to fill up with CO2 before the mold sets in. You don't want it uh, too full because it'll, this whole thing will rise up to the top and probably interfere with the airlock. All right, so let's weigh this thing. See, there it is. Uh, about 30 and a half. Let's just call it, round it up to a half. So uh, the other one was 15 and a half. So it looks like we got 15 ounces of, uh, of pepper mash. So now I can actually take that off of there. Grab a, like, a little bowl, put that on there. All right, and I want to tear that. And what, what I want to do now is take my salt calculate about 3% by weight. So it was 15 ounces. I got to multiply that by, uh, well, actually by 0 0.03 for 3%. So what I did is weigh out the 0.45 ounces of salt, added it to my jar, and now I just got to stir it in. All right, there it is, all stirred in. So uh, got it mushed in there, mashed in. Kind of settled down actually a little lower than I originally thought. So I'm actually on the borderline of wanting to add something else to this, but uh, I'm pressed for time. I'm gonna let this go as is and see how it turns out. Okay, I lied. Um, I decided to add some of the uh, Roma tomatoes in with it anyway. I mean, the way it settled out after mashing it and mixing all in, it was it was way below halfway mark. Not happy with that, so I went ahead and got the the uh, Roma tomatoes, which were actually San Marzano's, actually in my case, but the same style tomato. Chopped them up, put them in the mixer. There they are, pureed, <laughs> basically. So I'm gonna add them to the jar now. And since I added more tomatoes, I had to add the equivalent amount of uh, salt at 3% again. So I had a, a little, about five ounces of tomatoes. It's about 0.15, or now in this case, 0.2 ounces of salt. So now I'm gonna add that extra salt in to make sure at overall, the salt ratio is around 3% for the entire batch. All right, I stirred in the salt and you can see that's a lot better. That should be right about there. That's perfect now. Now for good measure, you see the stuff on the inside of the lip of the rim, I wanna wipe all that off because if I don't do that, it's highly likely that this is gonna get some mold and some fuzz growing on it there. So I'm gonna go around and wipe off the insides. Look, looking great. So again, oh, oh, there's a little piece there. Right there. Hmm. All right, so that's looking pretty good. And looks looks pretty tasty. Uh, it'll be even tastier in a few weeks. <laughs> Let's put the airlock on. So what I have for my airlock is a lid that fits the wide mouth ball jar, but this lid has got this little rubber o-ring inside for sealing along the lip, upper lip. It's got like a little uh, silicone grommet on the inside too to hold the airlock, which is right here. And many of you will recognize what this is. This is the same kind of airlock you put on your uh, Fermenter when you're making your homebrew or your wine or cider or mead or whatever your uh, your fancy is, right? It's the same kind of kind of airlock. So um, actually, I got this thing as a as a set. Actually, I didn't need any more airlocks. I just this came free. I have a whole bunch of airlocks in a homebrewing bin over here up to the side. But uh, this is what I got online, Amazon. I'll put a link in the video description down below for you if you want to go ahead and click and order that from my link and give me a small commission. That'd be great. All right. There it is. I got the nice airlock on there. Got the little water filled in there. Just like when you're making beer, right? Then I got the lid sealed on nice and snug. Got a little bit of head space, probably about uh, three quarters of the jar or more. This is about what you want. You don't want it to go higher. You don't want it to be much lower. Uh, there's negatives to uh, go in both directions here. So uh, it's ready to go. I'm gonna go put this down in my basement and let it ferment and check on it every few days. And here I am down the basement here on my bar with uh, with the new one right in the middle here, and I and I label these as well, right? So um, I put primarily I, I start off with the most dominant 
ingredient in this case it was tabasco and then the melrose and fresno peppers with some habanero and tomato in small proportions i also put the date on here so it's uh 2022 september 17th i did the same thing for some other ones see here's something back from august 23rd that was primarily habanero melrose and, and tabasco i did one here about a week later on august 29th that uh, was habanero melrose havasu peppers mango and garlic i'm really curious to see how this one turns out uh that, so that looks delicious and these have been fermenting for a while so you can kind of see they're a little bit darker in color a, little, a lot more watery um they bubbled and stuff in fact there's probably if i shake this one up here a little bit there's uh so you can kind of tell it's very liquidy and that's not having added anything to it that's just the natural uh, moisture that were in the peppers and the mango in that case uh, so i'll be back here every few days to like check on this and uh looking forward to give us a taste in, in a few weeks when that's when it's done now all we do is wait have a little patience let the fermentation finish out uh, fermentations uh, could be as little as a few weeks sometimes uh, maybe a few months or so maybe even longer uh, the longer it goes, the more mature and complex the flavor gets. So depending upon your uh, your taste, your palate, your interest, uh, and patience, you can let it go uh, quite a while. So uh, stick around. Uh, in the future video, I am going to show the results of the batch I did today, along with hopefully the results of these other jars that you see here alongside this one. I'm going to continue the progress. I'm going to, uh, or the process, I'm going to go ahead and take these finished fermentation mashes out and turn them into a, an actual hot sauce, right? So if you're not yet a subscriber and you just came to this video just by chance or by the search engine results and you want to see the results of that video, be sure to subscribe here, right? So you get, and then click the little bell notification so you get notified when that video comes. If you have any other questions, put them in the comments down below. Thanks for watching and I'll talk to you all next time.